Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland and this is a sleep hypnosis. Well, no, that's not hypnosis. It's a sleep recording. But, you know, (laughs) boring. I'm trying to describe it. I don't know. It's basically me just talking. So please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Now, I don't usually have a topic to focus on before I press the record button. I don't normally know what I'm going to talk about. But guarantee Andre will come out and start scratching and making noise. Uh, But... Today, I have decided in my professionalism as a professional podcaster, I've decided to plan the podcast very, with very minute detail. And when I say minute detail, I mean very small amount of detail. Um, I'm going to talk about my little brother, which is something I don't think I've talked about. I don't think I've talked about him previously. I might have mentioned him, but I don't think I've actually talked about him. So I'm going to today. And the reason I'm thinking about him is because I saw him on Saturday I mean to me that was yesterday but it is it's now Monday morning it is in fact 1.59am on Monday the I don't know what date it is so the 19th I think yeah I think it's the 19th of August wow it's the 19th So, happy birthday to my other brother. If you're listening to this, happy birthday, bruv. And that means you'll be 51. Because I'm 49 next week, in one week's time. Because we're a week, week apart. Two years apart, but one week, you know. So, happy birthday. And my little brother, his birthday is the day before my birthday. So, his birthday is in six days' time. But we're eight years apart. So, I thought (sighs) that'd make a nice, real, really boring story talk about him so let me have a look what can I remember and I'm not going to say anything bad about him because there's nothing to bad to say about him really just like I'm not going to say anything bad about any of my family just but I will try and remember some stuff about him just some embarrassing stuff um uh, let's sort of think. He's, so he was born. Basically what happened. Well, okay, I'm not going to go too far back. But his mum was pregnant. So that was my stepmom. My first stepmom. 
and I was seven years old and we lived in this house and I, if you listened to my podcast before uh, I've mentioned this house because it's the house that I lived with with my two older brothers and then we moved out into a bigger house because we needed the room um, I don't know how long it was after my little brother was born um, and then my grandparents moved in and lived there for a long time and I would say out of the houses that I lived in that was my favourite it's yeah pretty much um, but there was also the aspect of it being where my nan lived as well so I had the I suppose it's just a house that I had access to or I felt familiar with from the age of seven till oh, I don't know ten years ago so what am I now 40 yes yeah, so probably for about 40 years no 30 30 uh, over 30 years anyway because my nan moved out and moved into a residential place I think about five years before she before she left so and that she left four years ago so yeah I suppose it's about nine years isn't it anyway so that, I like that house and I have described the house in quite a detailed description of the, the particular property in question and and I don't know why this is because these were new builds these were when we moved in it was council it was council house when we moved in the, there was still houses being built it was I, mean, I guess it was a building site but a lot of it was built if that makes sense there was a but there's still houses were still being built around so it wasn't completed and I like that and maybe that's why I liked Fraggle Rock so much when I was a bit older when Fraggle Rock came on telly because it was always like they never stopped building did they you know the little the little builders with the little hats then the Fraggles would come along and start eating the, the bridges and the houses you know the roads and that and they'd have to start a game. And they'd be going... Me, 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 I think that's, that's what they used to say. There was a time when I was younger. And... Uh, whenever the... If I ever had a manager or a boss... Would come and tell us off. You know, wherever I worked, there'd always be a moment when the manager would come in and say, oh, you, you're you not working hard enough and you need to, you know, Jason, put your trousers back on and, and you're like, you need to get back to work and we've got a deadline to reach and, you know. And on quite a few occasions, when the person, when the manager stopped talking, I'd shout out, the trash heap has spoken. And they didn't like it. Now, not everyone's going <laughs> to 
to understand that reference, but it's uh, it's a Fraggle Rock reference. There is this um, basically the Fraggles would go to the trash heap for advice, and the trash heap would be this wise. Basically, it was just trash, but with a big mouth, like a big trashy trash trash thing. And uh, when he finished giving advice, I think one of his the people with him, one of his like I don't know assistants, would say, "The trash heap has spoken." Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I uh, this house that I lived in with my family. For some reason, because it had a front door, like most places, it had a back door, like I guess most houses do. But the back door was really high up off the ground I don't mean you know you, need, you didn't need binoculars to see the ground it wasn't that high up I didn't get sort of uh, height sickness or anything like that but there was a big step big concrete step and it was just, I think it's quite poorly built, really, if you ask me. He said, why would you have the door so high up? I mean, literally, you could have a flood and not be affected. But there was, we were no, nowhere near a river, nowhere near water. I mean, there was water in the taps. But, you know, it's just like, I don't know what was going on. I'm not sure if the neighbours had the same. I guess they probably did. Because they were all pretty much identical houses. And anyway, there was this... Whenever I think about that garden, the couple of things I remember. There's the memory of my granddad. Um, because when we moved out, he he moved in with my nan and he really made that garden garden beautiful he you know he was retired and he spent a lot of time in the garden um doing the flowers and you know just making it lovely and although it wasn't a big garden it wasn't a small garden if that makes sense I mean it wasn't there wasn't enough room for horses and cattle, but it, it or a golf course, but it was big enough to. Um, we had a little pond, and a washing line. And you know, you had, um, you had a shed there. It had. You know, it's, it's, it, was, it was lovely, really. Um, he spent a lot of time doing that, and I think he was happy. So I can't even remember that. And I remember the garden as well, because when my nan lived there on her own, when my, so my granddad left in, what was it, 1991. So he, he left the planet and my nan was there, living there on her own f from 91 till, yeah, for at least 20 years. And I used to go around and cut the lawn from about... Oh, wow, I suppose quite a while I used to do that. 2001. To, yeah, so for quite a while I used to cut a lawn 
the help just like once a week or something um, or when I visited she'd have me getting out there she'd uh, I remember I'd knock, knock on a door and she'd stick a piece of paper through the letterbox from inside saying you can come in when you've cut the lawn what? What? It's a bit rude. So I shout for the letterbox. Oh, you open the door now, or else. And she said, "Or oh, else." Put a letter, put another piece of paper, or else what? So I, I shouted. Nothing really. Just, I need the toilet. Another piece of paper. One or two. I said two. Another piece of paper comes out. Use the outside toilet. And so I start to walk away. Another, another let piece of paper comes out. Use the air freshener. Oh, what? So yeah, I ended up having to do the lawn and I remember because there used to be a tree in the front garden and I used to I'd mow the lawn but it'd be I'd mow the lawn around the tree but then a tree got taken down got removed I don't know why I'm not sure but then I didn't have to didn't have to mow around it anymore yeah that's the front lawn story the other thing I remember is when we first moved in before my nan and granddad moved in there because it was all a new build it was all you know Basically, the foundations hadn't settled. Not in the house. And I don't, I'm not saying that we were kind of woke up and the house was upside down. No, what I mean is the, the garden wasn't settled. It was basically like a... Just mud. But sinking mud, like some kind of quicksand swamp. And we were literally probably up to my waist in mud, which is quite good fun, kind of. It's it's fun if everybody else is also like up to the waist in mud it's less fun when you're the only one who's in the garden up to mud up to your waist and you see your family eating a dinner in the through the kitchen window occasionally pointing and laughing so that that's yeah that wasn't quite as much fun and what I remember as well is we had a snowy time. So the winter, because I'm, as far as I recall, <laughs> as far as I remember, we were there for just one winter. And so that would be the winter of 1978, uh, I suppose. I think. And it was proper wintry. I mean, proper snow. Lots and lots and lots of snow. 
the schools were closed and well my school was closed I mean I don't remember listening to the radio or watching television to see if any other schools were closed because I had no interest I did kind of know because my uh, brothers went to a different school in fact that's not true wait a minute if I was 8 9, 10, 11, 12 yeah, one of my brothers would have gone to a different school but the other one I think went to the same school as me my oldest one was 4 years older so he would have gone to he would have been in high school by then because he'd have been 12 wouldn't he and I realise you might be listening to this and thinking well, I don't know I don't know how old he was how should I know well he was he was 12 when I was 8 he was 4 years older than me we well, still is and I remember the snow because we couldn't open the back door well we could open the back door because it opened inwards but it was um, it basically there was like a snow drift and it filled the whole of the <clears throat> the alley of the back of the, the, the back of the house so we couldn't actually get out of the back door but the front we could just about get out and I think I was about up to my waist in snow which is fun unless of course you're the only one no I won't do that one no. it was it was fun I, it's different it's better than being up to your waist in dirt and mud it just it's I'm a big fan of snow. I absolutely love snow. Love it. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. Okay, I don't love it more than everything. I'm just saying I really love snow. There are other nicer things I'd rather look at, but I'm just saying snow is... I really... There's something about it, I think. So I used to live in East London. And it was grotty where I lived. It was grey, grotty, just like a nothing place. Uh, in a sense of <laughs> nothing. It was just houses. Houses and roads and traffic where I lived that's all there was and a few corner shops and it was that it was just and the houses had been there for probably since the war you know and there was, there wasn't um and all the streets had just got cars parked in them outside houses and there's nothing going on outside in the streets everyone was in their houses so it was just a, like a, a nothingness in a sense just people busy doing their thing it's a very grey it's very grey it was apart from the bits that weren't grey but you know it's just like uh. but when it snowed it's like it transformed it into Narnia everything was just clean it looked clean it smelt clean you know there was no there was practically no traffic so there was no car fumes uh, there was there wasn't much in the way of 
planes going over because you know so that that was so quite quiet there's a peacefulness around where I lived and I don't remember there being that many snowy winters when I lived in London the, the biggest one I think was 1991 when I first went to London and that winter the snow was just massive massive amounts of snow that lasted for like a week or two brilliant absolutely loved it there's been a few occasions over the years when it's been really like non-stop snow where I've lived now I don't remember much snow during my insurance days sort of between 2001 and 2007 I'm sure there was snow but I just don't have any memories of it however in 2007 uh, I think it was November I just started in the September I think it was the start of my degree my three year full time degree in counselling so I moved to a new town where the college was and the snow we had like proper full full snow really heavy I mean technically snow is no heavier than anything else is it a kilo of snow is the same as a kilo of feathers but it just it fell fell heavily and I don't think I visited family for Christmas that year because of the weather I think I think because I have this recollection of standing outside possibly coming back from the garage which was just up the road the petrol station and I probably bought myself some lagers or something and another person was passing me I think he'd come from the pub and wished me a Merry Christmas so I think it was Christmas Eve I think and I just remember that and then it snowed again I think the following year in 2008 Christmas I think it snowed the following year in 2009 but there's lots of snow like a lot like a real lot of snow <laughs> but yeah so that was really cool and then I think it went a few years without much and in 2011 I lived on a bit of a hill and it snowed again it was in fact I think it was 2012 beginning of the year like January or February it really snowed and there was this car I was trying to drive up the hill but it was 
basically travelling the wrong way. And I remember thinking to myself, I wouldn't want to be in that car or behind it. And there's just all these cars that are just been abandoned. It was like some kind of zombie apocalypse, but with snow and no zombies. So it was. I remember that because I had a new girlfriend who is from Romania, I think, somewhere like that. And we just started dating. And I'm not sure she'd ever seen snow before. But she might have done. See, back in 2009, or was it 2010? Two thousand and ten, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. It might have been two thousand and ten. I don't know. I lose track. But there was this little. I said little because she was really tiny. Um, lady, that moved in to the place I was living she she had the other room and she was absolutely tiny and I think she was from Sudan or Africa or somewhere I don't know I didn't ask but her jeans she had to, I had to look because I was just curious they were on the radiator uh, she'd washed them and they were just being dried and they were so little and I thought I've got to see what age these are because she was an adult she was I think about 22, 23 and I thought I've got to see what age what age clothes she wears because it just and I think she had I think the size of like a 10 year old or 11 year old for the for the jeans, um, but you know she's definitely a woman. You you know, but it's just really to see someone so she couldn't have been more than probably five foot, maybe maybe shorter, but about five foot, and. That's not really relevant to the to the story, but when it snowed, I was indoors just keeping warm, and I looked outside, and she was out there making a snowman because she'd never seen snow before. I mean, like in in person, I'm sure she's she would understand the Narnia reference. Probably seen that film, and very likely seen It's a Wonderful Life, and many other films. I guess The Snowman. I was going to say, thinking of something that has snow in it. There's lots of films, isn't there, with snow? But where she'd lived her life. They didn't have snow. So it was the first time that she'd seen it. And she made a snowman. And she was so happy. She seemed to be very happy. And I was quite pleased you know, because the snow she used to um, make the snowman had cleared the path so I could get through without sort of getting myself too wet I'm 
trying to think of other times where it snowed. Oh, there was one time back in 2013. Or was it 2012? I think it was December 2012. I got a job in insurance because the counselling just basically lost lots of work because of the the government cuts on the. So I did a lot of work for charities, so they got their funding reduced and stuff. So I ended up um, going back to work in insurance full time and still doing the counselling part time and that year that's I got the job in December and I think it had snowed November December January February March and April it had snowed it not constantly the whole time but it's it snowed in every single one of those months so we had you know had a little bit of snow in November had a bit more in December had even more in January but it kind of melted it kept melting and stuff but once I think it was February or mid end of January, February, and it was just constant. It just seemed to snow every day for ages. I actually thought the ice age had returned, but it turned out it was just snow. And I remember speaking to the customers on the phone and saying, is it snowing where you are? And because I, I want you know, I was trying to build up rapport with them, and the person sitting next to me st started to get a bit annoyed with hearing me keep saying the same thing, which encouraged me to say it even more often and make sure that he heard every time and I would I'd just talk about the weather oh is it snowing where you are have you built a snowman if they said yes I said well I used to live with someone that had never seen snow before and I was coming out of my bedroom and I saw that she was building a snowman and she seemed really happy and I was happy too because uh, the snow she'd used to make the snowman had made a pathway so I could actually get out of the out of the building through the garden and uh, You won't believe what size jeans she used to wear. So yeah, it, was, it kind of gave me an opportunity to talk to the people and sort of to build that, that really close relationship with them. So, you know, it's, it was good. You know what's really strange about this? Well not strange, just more my behaviour really, is I was used to living in that that part of the house on my own because it was kind of like an extension, so it was away from the family and it was just my room, a room opposite that no one, occasionally people moved in and moved out again and then it was the bathroom right next between the rooms not bet not between but next you know yeah kind of between so I was used to be able just to get up go to the bathroom go to the toilet have a shower whenever I wanted um, but then she moved in and 
she was doing night shift or working to really early hours of the morning and I'd be in bed and she'd start to shower and it was a power shower so it'd be this it kind of almost sounded like a I don't know like a rocket taking off I'd like shake the shake the room and I moaned at her I complained complained to the landlady and I made no effort to be friend I wasn't rude to her but I just I didn't really put much effort in and because I'm yeah I can be a bit shy myself but I was grumpy as well which was a bit silly in hindsight she was just having a shower I mean it's it's a good thing isn't it really but anyway I get up one day and I look out the window and there's a van out there and I hear there's like voices outside my bedroom door so I kind of open it up I listen have a little listen first stick my ears to the door you know and uh, when I open my door her door's open and her bedroom's empty pretty much there's there's like boxes and stuff like that and I said oi what are you doing she said uh, I'm moving out I'm going to go and live in London. And she hadn't been there for more than probably a month. And I said, why? And she said, At which just, she said, I've got no friends. Because she'd only been in the country. I didn't realise, I thought she'd been here for a while. But she'd, apparently she's only just moved to the country. And... I felt bad then it's like oh if only I just made a bit more effort so I kind of so I have I've learned from that I do when I moved here I've put a bit of effort in uh, and say hello to people but it was weird because she gave me a big hug and it was really nice but it was too late I think if we'd have had that hug two weeks earlier I don't think she'd have moved because we I don't know I just think we could have got on quite well and I, if I'd known that she was that way if that, that lonely and I would have could have sat and talked to her for hours and bored her and imagine that how good that would be so instead of doing it to a a recorder and recording it I could actually have a human subject sitting in a chair in front of me and I could be talking at them for long periods of time now that is a dream come true. Anyway, she left. She she moved out. And part of me was sad. But part of me thought, I won't get woken up by that shower anymore then. So yes, yeah, it, it kind of worked out. Plus I think she's... I think it was a good idea to move to London. You know, it's 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 quite a good place to meet people. There's a lot more. It's a lot more people there. You know, it's the busiest part of the of the country. A lot of you know, 
10 million people condensed into a short to a small area the size of a the size of a giant's toenail so going back to the house that I used to live in and there's all that snow um, well, the snow is really not really relevant to the story but I remember I actually when I was eight I built an igloo I built an igloo like properly um, made little bricks out of snow and mixed the ice and dirt together to make cement uh, with stones as well and I made this igloo I spent hours making it I think the first one my brother um, trod on but I think the second one I did it didn't and I built this igloo it was brilliant absolutely loved it and when all the snow melted the last thing to melt was the igloo which just shows how well it was built in fact it's still there still there today right now it's still there yes it is so we had this big step outside the back door of this house and my my little brother's mum had he was inside her as a little baby oblivious to the world you know just asleep I imagine just planning all the things he was going to do to me how many things he was going to do to annoy me when he was born and I was in the garden and I have a memory and I and this has just come to me now I have a memory that it was really windy maybe even really rainy and I slipped over off of the concrete step onto the floor and bashed me little knee and so why did I say little knee obviously I was eight it was little now what I mean is I've, I've actually got three knees I've got an extra little one um, it's just it's just out on my left shoulder it just sticks out it's a little knee it's a bit weird but anyway so I hurt my little knee and my step mum she uh, at that time she was concerned about me and she came and she picked me up as I guess she would do and uh, a water broke I nearly drowned no, a water broke and uh, see I didn't know about all this stuff I, did, I knew she was pregnant didn't know about the water breaking bit And I don't know, I kind of because it was like all over the kitchen floor, I think. Like it was just it's everywhere, but it was slipping and sliding. But it was
I just I just felt a bit peeved off about it because I thought okay so you're going to do that in the kitchen yeah you complain when I wet the bed you know double standards but anyway she went to the hospital had a baby well had my little brother and that was one of my better birthdays I, well all my, all my birthdays when I was a kid were pretty good but I got a, a golf court a golf set and what happened is my nan and granddad came down to look after us um, because in those days when someone had a baby they actually stayed in hospital for more than four hours and nowadays you know try and try and get it to give birth in the ambulance on the way so then you can kind of leave you outside the hospital not even take you in don't like to give up bed space for for patients oh no precious beds so she she was in hospital for maybe a couple of days it might, might have just been overnight but it was at least one or two nights so I had my birthday I got some golf like a putting set with these golf clubs that were really heavy so that was fun I remember getting told off by my nan because I think me and my brothers were arguing but that's what kind of brothers are supposed to do I think it's kind of natural really and then he came home and I think he was I think the person that wrote the book and the screenplay for The Gremlin was based on my brother. You know, brought him home. He was this little cute little thing. Big eyes, just like, just smiling and everyone fell in love with him. I knew what he was really, really about. I knew but I didn't say anything and he just turned into this little gremlin over time just terrorising me and he could get away with anything I mean one, once this is totally true he bit my cheek I mean, this, he had teeth, so it wasn't when he was a baby, but it was like, I don't know, two or three. He bit my cheek, and he wouldn't let go. And I'm walking around with him for about five days. You know, I was in class at school, like just, Jason, would you like to come to the blackboard and write down the answer to this question? I said, no, I can't. It's just... He's too heavy, I can't keep walking around. And you know, so so he was stuck to my cheek. Teeth embedded in my cheek. And I'm to say that I wasn't enjoying it is an understatement. He seemed to be having fun, but I wasn't. And what was weird about it is when I actually, I was like yelling at him. My dad came into the room and he, he told me off. At this point, my brother let go in about two seconds as soon as he heard my dad. Turned back into that little, cute little creature that everyone adores. And there's me with this bite mark in my cheek. I mean, literally, it was there. It was just, 
how on earth he didn't get all the way through the skin probably he's got, got chubby cheeks I suppose I was quite lucky but he is this and I got in trouble I was like okay so he basically could get away with anything anything at all so he was very annoying but on the same side or on the opposite side I did love him and I did I spent quite a lot of time with him and then when he was how old would he be when I was 13 so how old would he be then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 so he'd be 5 when he was five or six, I started teaching him karate. And he So I was going to a karate club twice a week, two evenings, Tuesday and a Thursday, I think. But they didn't allow anyone under the age of twelve, I think, to go to attend. And I, I kept on at the at my teacher, the karate teacher said, Come on, please, can you let my brother come along? Start having younger people come because he's five but he's you know, he you know, I've been teaching him how to kick and you know, he's we've got um punch bags and nunchucks and all kinds of stuff that I was like that he'd hit me with basically so in the end he said okay it took a, took a few weeks of me like hounding him but in the end he said okay and my little brother was the first young person ever to be taught in that karate club that particular karate club the first the youngest ever and they did it on a like a Saturday morning, I think. So he actually went in and did a special day, like a special. And I used to go in and teach because they were little, and because my brother was there, the I kind of oh I, I wasn't teaching the class. I was just like assisting, kind of. Because they were all they were all white belts. There was no one with any any belt grades or anything. And then eventually, well, eventually, my brother he stopped going. But he did get his first belt. I think he got a yellow belt, so he got his first grade in. But I think he lost interest. But then he moved away as well. But that was quite cool. So I've got him into the, into that, and there was uh, there was one occasion where he was being uh, a kid who might have actually been older than him, but he was a neighbour, and he he was picking on my brother, or he attempted to pick on my brother and my brother did some karate on him and that never happened again and I, I, I said to my brother I think that that gave him confidence after that you know, at a very early age, it gave him confidence to know that he could deal with anything. In that situation, he never had to do that again, I don't think. But then I think he growing up to the age of eight with three older brothers, he was used to the, the rough and tumble of having older brothers and so yeah I think I think that 
I should ask him. I don't know. I imagine it must have been quite fun for him for the first eight years. I don't know. Yeah, so really considering this was going to be a story about him, the only thing I've really said is that he's annoying, which wasn't my intention. I've tried to think of... Um, guys, I was always getting hurt by him. Was it? I remember once, I think I was... I had my, my leg... And it was stretching. And he jumped on it. I thought he broke my leg. Anyway. That's the end of this one. And I'll speak to you very soon. Bye.